In this first video, we're going to recreate the prog placemark you saw just a second ago. And inside the placemarks description, we're going to link to an image that's hosted on a web server. For this tutorial, you'll need, of course, Google Earth and a few other programs that are listed on this tutorial's website. In particular, you'll need a zipping program such as 7-Zip, which is available for Windows and is free and open source. If you're on Mac OS X, you can use the Unarchiver, which is also free and open source. And you'll also need an HTML editor like Dreamweaver, or in this tutorial, we'll use Enview, which is also open source and available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Let's get started by setting up some folders for our project. As you can see, I already have a castle folder on my desktop. Go ahead and make one for yourself. I'm going to delete my old placemarks and add a new subfolder called Images. This is where we'll put the screenshot of the 3D model we'll take in just a second. Next, start up a web browser and do a Google search for 3D Warehouse. We're looking for one of the first links, which is 3D Warehouse, which is on sketchup.google.com. Go ahead and click on the link and do a quick search for Prague. We're going to go find that model that I was looking at it just a second ago. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, we're looking for the Prague Castle St. Vitus Cathedral. Once you found it, go ahead and click on the link. And scroll down, we're looking for the Google Earth download button. There it is on the far right. Go ahead and click on the button and open up the model in Google Earth. Once the model loads, fly a little bit closer and pick a perspective that you like. Once you've found one, click on File, Save, Save Image. Go ahead and navigate to your desktop, go to the Castle folder and the Images subfolder, and save this screenshot uh, as the name screenshot.jpg. Now we're going to upload this picture to the internet. So go back to your web browser, go to pages.google.com, and if you don't already have a Google account, you can sign up for one here. Otherwise, go ahead and just put in your Gmail account and password. If you haven't used Google Pages before, you'll probably start off editing your home page. But for this, we just want to go back to the Site Manager. Let me move this window a little bit so you can see a bit better. And look for the Uploaded Stuff box and click on the Upload link and then Browse. And then go to your desktop on the Castles folder, Images folder, and choose that screenshot.jpg we just created. Go ahead and click Open and the file will automatically upload. Once it's done, go ahead and click on the link and you'll see your screenshot. Go ahead and go to the address bar of your browser and select this URL and then right click and copy it. We'll need it in just a second. Go ahead and close your web browser and then start Enview. Because Google Earth doesn't support cascading style sheets, we need to change a preference in Enview. So click on the Tools menu, Preferences, and then under Cascading Style Sheets, uncheck this Use CSS Styles instead of HTML Elements and Attributes. Then go ahead and click OK. The first thing we need to do is save this untitled document. So click File Save As. Go ahead and give it just any title you want for the page. And then navigate to your desktop. And under the Castle folder, go ahead and call this castle.html. Now let's insert that screenshot. Click on the Image button or click on the Insert menu, Image. Then in the Image Location field, right click and choose Paste. This is the URL from Google Pages where we uploaded that picture. Now if you want you can supply an alternate text or just click Don't Use Alternate Text. Then click on the Dimensions tab, Custom Size, and then specify a width no wider than about 300 pixels. Then go ahead and click OK. And there's a screenshot that we took of our 3D model. Let's go ahead and add some text at the bottom. So click to the right of the image, hit enter a few times, and go ahead and type some text. I'm going to put in St. Vitus Cathedral, Prague, Czech Republic. Now make sure that you save your file. And then click on the Source tab at the bottom of Envio. And finally, highlight all of this HTML code click on the Edit menu, copy it, and then switch back to Google Earth. Now we're going to add a new placemark, so I'm going to back out a little bit, and then click on Add, Placemark. I'm going to move the placemark to in front of the cathedral, 
and then we'll edit the placemarks properties. So in this description box, right click and paste all of that HTML from Enview. And then give it a new name. I'm going to call this one Prague Castle. When you're done, go ahead and click OK. Now click on your placemark and you should see that screenshot that we captured and uploaded to Google Pages. We're almost finished. Let's save our placemark by either right-clicking on the icon itself or right-clicking under its name under Temporary Places. Choose Save As. Navigate to your desktop. We'll save this in the Castle folder. And we want to make sure we're saving this as a KML file. So under Save as Type, choose KML. And then name it prog.kml. We want to save it one more time this time as a KMZ file. So again, right click and choose Save As. And this time call it Prog and make sure you choose Save as Type KMZ. Then click Save. So let's take a look at the two files we created. Go ahead and minimize Google Earth and I'm going to open up Prog.KML in Notepad++ or you can also use TextEdit on Mac or regular Notepad on Windows. If you look at the top, we've got our style information for the placemark, and down at the bottom, the placemark itself. I'm going to set the view to wrap the text so we can see everything. And here's our placemark with the name, and there's all of the HTML that we created in Enview. This is why KML is the best format while developing your Google Earth projects. It's easy to edit in a text editor. That's a little different from the KMZ you'll see in a second, which is actually packed up as a zip file and can't be simply edited with a text editor. So now let's go ahead and minimize this window and take a look at the prog.kmz file we created. I'm going to drag this onto 7-zip or stuff it expander on Mac and you can see that inside the zip file we've got a doc.kml file. This is almost identical to the prog.kml file you saw outside in the castle folder. When your placemarks only contain links to images that are available on the internet Saving them as a KMZ will only include this doc.kml file. As you'll see in the next video segment, when you link to images that are on your hard drive, Google Earth will automatically bundle them up inside this KMZ file. KMZs are better than KMLs when publishing your projects because they're a lot smaller. So now let's go back to Google Pages and click on the Upload button and choose that KMZ file that we just created. Once you open it, It'll be up on your website, and you can just click on the link, and the file will begin to download. So if you want to share this KMZ with someone, in Firefox you can just right-click on a link and choose Copy Link Location. And if you paste that URL up top, you can send this to someone and they'll be able to download and check out this KMZ for themselves. In the next video segment, I'll show you how to take the prog.kmz and include the screenshot.jpg inside so you can view this file offline without an internet connection. You'll also see why it's important to keep all of the files organized on your computer. It'll make it a lot easier to create these self-contained KMZ files.